Hello all. Today we're talking about the song Sarah. Uh, Sarah started years ago when I was in a band called Bowen uh, with Scott, the drummer of Pure Nonsense, and a guy named Doug Bowen, who was a singer, guitarist, songwriter of Bowen. Uh, Doug's a great songwriter and guitarist. His stuff is below. Put a link to his website there for you. So I wrote this song when I was in Bowen, and uh, it was an okay song. I really liked the chorus, but the rest of the song wasn't very good. That's kind of how most of my songs are written. It's usually the best parts of bad songs. So I had this chorus sitting around for years, and at some point I ended up going to college. When I went to college, what's great about college is they had all these practice rooms. As long as you went to college here, you could play in the practice rooms all day long. And that's pretty much what I did. I just go sit down at their Baldwin Babe Grand pianos and just play piano all day. Uh, at one point, that actually kind of hurt me a little bit because I wanted to get an easy A for like a two credit class. So I was going to take piano 101. So I signed up for it. And at one point, the professor there, the music professor, came down, knocked on the door, and I was playing piano. He goes, so Mark, I saw you signed up for Piano 101. And I said, yeah. And he said, yeah, you can't take Piano 101. And I said, why not? And he said, because I walk by this room every day. You can take Piano 401. And I'm like, but I can't read music that well. And then he said, well, I just saw you last semester when your roommate was in Piano 101, and you were down here every day basically, you know, tutoring him on Piano 101. And I said, all right, that's fair. So couldn't take piano 101. So I'm sitting there and I'm playing piano every day. And I came up with this nice little uh, piano, you know, musical piece, uh, which is right here. So I was playing that, and I remember the chorus I had for that song I liked before. And I thought, hey, that piano piece goes nice in the chorus. So I had that sitting there for, you know, a little while. I was working other stuff in the piano as well. And at that point, I was also dating this woman. You know, I was dating her at one point. She said, how come you never write a song about me? You know, you're a songwriter. And I said, well, that's not really what I do. But, you know, I'll think about it. Probably not, but, you know, I'll think about it. Uh, so a couple days later, you know, I'm sitting down there playing piano. Da -da -da -da. I thought to myself, I remember what my you know, girlfriend at the time said, and I said, hey, maybe I'll try to write a song about, you know, somebody. Let's see how that goes. So, sat down, you know, started playing, started humming. Ten minutes later, I wrote the whole song. I was like, hey, look, I wrote a song. Yay! You know, never thought to myself, this would be like my best known song for the next 20 years. But, it's the way it is sometimes. You know, I've written songs that I thought were great. And I show them to people, and they're like, eh. Wrote Sarah in ten minutes, I was like, hey, look, I wrote a song. Yay! Song I'm probably best known for. So, you know, I wrote the song, played it once. I was like, eh, it's nice. You know, I went back to my dorm room. I think next day, like, my girlfriend comes over and I'm like, hey, remember you said you maybe write a song for you? I did. And she said, you did? I said, yeah. Now, mind you, it wasn't a love song I wrote for her. I literally just wrote a song about her. It's not mean. You know, it's not nice. It's just about her. So I'm like, yeah, I wrote a song about you. She's like, all right, let's go hear it. And I'm like, but we were just sitting here. She's like, no, we're going to hear the song you wrote about me. I'm like, all right. So walk down across campus, went to piano rooms, sit down. And, uh, you know, my first worry was, like, I wouldn't be able to play the song right because I just wrote it. Like, I didn't know how it went at that point. But I was like, yeah, I'll kind of muck it up and figure it out. Uh, the second worry that she was going to hear it and slap me because, you know, it wasn't a very nice song. Again, not a mean song. It's not a love song. So I sit down, you know, get the piano, sit there, start playing it, play it all the way through. Don't look at her at once. You know, I don't want to see if she's mad at me or frowning or going to hit me. Who knows? So I'm done with the song, look over at her, and she's crying. I'm like, it's not that bad. She goes, no, Mark, that's perfect. I said, really? She's like, yeah, that's a great song. It's like, hey, maybe it's not so bad. So, you know, some point I go, you know, get a new band, Fairytale Project. Uh, we actually recorded this song twice with the Fairytale Project, once with our buddies Rick's Basement. Uh, another time we went to a real studio, 
you know, record the drums. We actually had it mic'd up by the engineer, the Kid Rocks. You know, mics up all Kid Rock stuff. So, you no, know, I had it engineered. We uh, recorded the song, recorded bass, drums, guitars, I think vocals. Then at that point, we ran out of money. We broke up. Because, you know, the best time to break up is after you spend a bunch of money recording an album. So, broke up. Uh, at some point, though, you know, I wanted to get the album finished. So I found a guy and, you know, he kind of mixed what was left of the song. I think I replayed the piano part because it was just a real basic piano part. So I replayed the piano part in his little MIDI keyboard. He mixed it, and that's the version we have. Uh, I think we put up a MySpace back in the day. People liked it. You know, we actually got people around the country saying they liked the song, uh, which was cool. We played it every show I think we ever played. And it's certainly, you know, my best known song. Now, if I remember for nothing but writing Sarah, I'm happy with that. I think most people who've heard the song don't know I wrote it because I'm just the bassist in the band. Everybody assumes the singer writes everything. And in most bands, the singer probably does write everything. I mean, Dick Darling writes songs. He writes, wrote two songs that are going to be on tonight. But irregardless of whatever happens with me, you know, musically going forward, you know, I'll always remember the first time I played Sarah for Sarah. Sarah wasn't a real name. You know, is what I thought her name was when I first met her. It wasn't Sarah. Very much looking forward to recording this song for the third time. Uh, and actually, you know, Scott's going to do a string arrangement for it, so we're going to strings in it. It's a little bit of guitar stuff in it as well. Uh, also going to have it all properly mixed and everything, so we have a big full version of Sarah, which is going to be great. Uh, so here for you is a Fairchild Project's version of Sarah that came out, I don't know, 15 years ago. I mean, it never really came out. Put on MySpace. MySpace is gone. So here is Sarah by the Fairchild Project. So tell me what is right Cause I need more than a simple goodnight You don't understand the pain I feel You don't understand what is real Why do we do the things we do And go through all the shit that we go through And why must every single night Tragedy, another drawn out fight. Will you think about your reasons that never are quite clear? And you're saying that you're leaving, but you're still grounded here. Good night, good night. The songs about tomorrow are never right. Good night, so go do what you want. Say
I haven't talked to Sarah in like 18 years. That's fine. She's kind of nuts.